Russian fiction. Yesterday we had Vampire the Masquerade, where also Nikki was playing with us. The Masquerade, it was awesome. It was Nikki a wonderful was show. With us. Of course, there's my was... camera just playing over and over again. Uh, newbie streamers, but this is Castle Falcon City tonight. This is an Art Talsorian game, kind of indie and uh, obscure compared to Cyberpunk, but it is an awesome system. We are all very excited to play for it. And look at this! Look at these characters! Look at this cast! Oh my gosh! You, I, I cannot, I cannot describe the excitement I felt watching everybody build their characters and sharing pictures of their cosplays and like debating what to get and everybody just like, oh my god, should we just go like the full like lace gloves and fans and everybody's just like, yes, 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 get it all. It was awesome. Uh, so I am really excited to start this game uh, and I am going to let Chris Gary take it away. Also, we have donations. I did not update the donations because I forgot. Uh, but we do have donations and they are split completely 100% among the cast during the game. So please, if you enjoyed the show, tip generously uh, and uh, let's get started. Take it away, Chris. Uh, I think you are muted. Welcome everyone you to the Falkenstein Affair. I am your host, Chris Geary and uh, this is your cast. We will be taking you to the world of Castle Falkenstein, which is an alternate Earth. Uh, by the game, it is the fifth Earth. Um, so it is an alternate reality. It is one that you can reach from this reality, but it is not the same. So we are going to take you on a story that begins in Constantinople. And we have a cast of characters here, and I'd like to introduce the players first. So, we'll begin at the top left. So, if you don't mind, Bella, launch us. Who are you and who are you playing? I was really doing some math because of the Zoom call. So I'm like, where, who is the top left? Um, <laughs> hi, my name is Bella. Uh, you can find me on uh, Boondoggles on Twitter. I will be playing Theodosia Cartal, a very naive, very adventurous uh, young lady, all noble like. Uh, yeah, I'm very excited. This corset is slightly uncomfortable. Let's get, let's get into it. <laughs> And next, I'm gonna go across the top. So, Sarah, who are you and who are you playing? It is so wonderful to be joining all of you tonight to kind of start telling a story. Uh, my name is Sarah L. Kinney. You can find me at this or potentially this on the internet, uh, usually on Twitter, I talk about board games and baked goods, but more importantly, tonight I will be playing Zeynep Okalaigos, who is a notable uh, noble of Constantinople, who kind of is finding a way to not be a noble while still being a noble at the same time. And I'm excited to see how that plays out when we finally jump into it. Thank you for that introduction. And we're going to drop down to Adelaide. Uh, yeah, that's me, Adelaide Gardner, at Adelaide on Twitter, and I am playing Kate Clock, a uh, rather interesting, mysterious character that seems to have a lot of money, uh, but in fact does not have a lot of money and uh, gets her, her livelihood from... Um, conning people out of theirs on frequent occasions. Thank you. And next is Nikki. Who are you and who are you playing? I'm Nikki and I'm playing Cassandra, um, a fairy. Um, and she is just... 
Thank, thank you. Having some connection there. issues, yeah. <laughs> okay. While we work Happens. that out, let's jump to Chantel. Chantel, who are you and who are you playing? I am Chantel B. You can find me at Chantel B on Twitter. Um, I okay, am... I froze. Sorry. Oh. Yep. We, we'll, we'll circle back, Nick. Um, I am playing Ella Malas, um, a... A doctoral engineer, an engineering doctor. I haven't really found a thing, but she's that. Excellent. So, Nikki, thank you so much for returning to us. Tell us about Cassandra again. Um, she is a fairy. Um, mm. I'm really bad at this. <laughs> <laughs> no <fine>. problem. <laughs> what does she do? What does she do in the Zainab's house? To be a servant. So a maid, right? Oh no, I think she's crashing again. Oops. Happens. Technical difficulties. Mm -hmm. Day one. What is a T TDRB show without them? No worries. While that's happening, we will work on that. Adelaide, do we have a separate screen for the card reading still, or? Uh, we don't have like a whole separate screen. No, that's fine. just a small one. So we'll go ahead and work from here. While uh, Nikki is working out technical difficulties. I am going to begin our episode with a card reading for our players and for what may come. The first card is the Nine of Diamonds. The Nine is a card of reaping it is a card of um the aftermath of things the fruition of hard work diamonds being one of the physical world uh sometimes wealth sometimes health so it is a place like constantinople itself that has reaped many many years of benefits and is um, maybe already peaked, maybe on its way down. We shall see as we explore what is left. The present represented by this seven of hearts, the seven are card of chaos, opportunity, luck, hearts, the suit of emotions, as people are working through this time of change, this time of uncertainty, of opportunity, they find themselves a mixture of feelings. And what do we have look to look forward to though? The two of clubs, those who are passionate, those who lean into this time will find themselves communicating, making connections, building alliances in ways that can be fruitful to the self, to the spirit, to the core passion that drives them, to whatever their purpose is, their motivations. And that dear friends, is how our game begins and how our story begins. We begin in the uh, Senge uh, 
an uh, Athenaeum, a library, private library of the Senge family. They have been a fixture in Constantinople politics going back generations. They trace their family line to the Persian Empire and they believe in the power that their family can sway things. They are more progressive than many of their counterparts and their eldest, uh, their daughter, Nahir, is at the forefront of the reform movement. She brings together many different sort of folk in hopes to try and take the empire, the Ottoman Empire, forward into the coming 20th century, or yeah, coming 20th century, and have it thrive once again. Her goals may not be the goals of the people you see, the cast you see before you, but they are the goals that we begin with. Hopes and dreams for a greater future. One that will see the birth of a university system built on the scholarship of the Ottoman Empire. A vast set of resources that the world has traveled to in order to learn from and contribute to over the centuries. So the scene I paint before you is a building with tall shelves, not like the libraries that we think of in Europe or in the US, but these shelves take different shapes and different forms. They do hold books. There are a number of um, other furniture or built-ins that are cases with drawers and um, closed glass doors with shelves in them of sorts that hold scrolls. Some of them display pieces of artwork. Some of them do, like uh, small sculptures. Um, decorative uh, bowls, decorative plates, commemorating uh, different events over the years or different artists from different time periods. You'll find a wide variety of antiquities throughout this building as it reaches three stories into the sky with an open center and a dome that is all glass, but not just glass, stained glass, depicting a wide variety of events that have been a part of the Senge family. Now, there is a party, it is an open house. It is the first time in decades that the Senge uh, and Athenaeum has been open to the public. Many, many people mingle here. And as any good family would, there is high quality coffee, a variety of um, small, we would call them finger foods, but nothing that is mm, a full meal unto itself. Throughout the high ceilings and openness of this floor plan, you will also note that the large glass doors and windows around the different floors are open out into a courtyard of which birds and cats and even some dogs roam. It is not uncommon to see them walk through the uh, Athenaeum either. 
where do we find Ella? Ella and, would probably. Mm -hmm, I'm sorry. And what brought her here for the audience? Ella has a deep love and of knowledge and very much wants to know everything. Um, not quite indiscriminately, but everything that she can. Um, we would find her probably scanning the books and scrolls that she can looking most specifically at the oldest text that she can find. Okay. Um, as you're kind of scanning the first floor, I'm assuming at this point, and working your way through, um, it's not overly full, um, but there are a variety of people kind of wandering and um, gazing upon what's on the shelves, uh, you will find uh, a variety of older texts and you settle upon one that is uh, a scroll. Uh, it caught your eye because it looks as though it, uh, its origins are in Egypt. Hmm. Oh. What language is it written in? Egyptian. Oh, very nice. Um, it's old enough that it predates what people would commonly think of as Arabic, uh, which is commonly shared throughout the region and the uh, Ottoman Empire. Uh, it is ancient Egyptian. Mm. Um, can I read it? I don't know. What languages does Ella know? Um, I... is, let's start with your education. What level is, your edu is, is Ella's education? It's great. Great. Uh, great education provides you a wide variety of experiences from that um, and exposure to many languages. So um, let's see here. Typically, um, you would find, I'm trying to find, um, it's the equivalent of a university degree that we would think of today. Uh, you can, let's see, you can speak, of course, your native tongue, um, ancient languages, at least in this region, Greek, ancient Greek would be one of them with Constantinople and the mm. influences there. Um, but you could choose uh, any other two from things like Latin, ancient Persian, ancient Egyptian, whichever you feel, uh, whichever other two you feel like Ella would have studied. I feel she would have studied. Probably. Latin and Persian, not Egyptian. Then, mm, so no. You would have seen it and been exposed to it. You know what it is, but reading it, yeah. you would likely need um, someone to help you translate. Mm. Okay. Um, the scrolls and books around it mm -hmm. what are they all is, like is this a section of just ancient egyptian texts no it's not built like that at all right. um you might um find that uh a theme amongst it if you peruse everything in the area but uh you may want to speak or seek out um, the curator hmm. of the Athenaeum, who um, you would have known of um, as Adnan Sadiq. Um, 
I will do so. So as you mosey along to see if you can track down where Adnan is uh, for this particular event, I'm going to move to a grouping of three. It would be Theodosia, Zeynep, and Cassandra. I know this because lately, anytime Theo goes out, Zeynep is at her side for a variety of reasons that they can tell you more about. And Cassandra, who doesn't often leave the house, has been drug along on adventures, uh, prodded, encouraged, um, even sometimes ordered by Zeynep to get out and see more of the city. Who would like to describe where you are inside the building or in the courtyard is fine as well. I think Theo probably uh, is like in between the aisles of books and has made herself like a fortress of the books already. She somehow has already decided all these are the books I'm going to read and made herself a little bit of a wall on either side of herself and is like yelling to Zeynep to come over and uh, look at some of these books. Because she has no idea why she, she thinks this is just a fancy library. She doesn't know there's an event going on. She's just going with Zeynep. You know, she thinks this is just another library, which is so fun and good. And it is a library. So she just is there for a good time. And Zeynep, well, how do you react to this? Zeynep is here begrudgingly. Uh, this is the type of event that she turns up her nose at because it bores her. Um, but tonight, she gets to be here not as a kind of noble with the responsibility of rubbing shoulders and making good impressions. There's still an expectation that she does that. Uh, but really, they are here to escort Theo. Zeynep's specific instructions were, do not let her leave your sight. But Zeynep was perhaps a few bookshelves away, uh, perusing through some of her own, uh, kind of thumbing through some titles that caught her interest before hearing her voice. And her. Um, she's very tall. Um, very few people in the library are able to, or really in the city, are able to meet her eye level. So when she snaps up, she strikes a very particular and striking figure, not because of particular uh, beauty or handsomeness, but rather size and strength. And in a few short strides, they are peeking down the aisle where Theo finds herself. Uh, my lady, you, you called. What, um, you cannot expect me to carry all of those for you. No, then I'm, I'm, that, what is the purpose of having an escort? Well, the other escorts carried my books. Say no. I, well, I, it's I, okay. only like 30. Look, what are these for? She like grabs your arm and like squeezes those. What are these for? But to hold books. All right. If you can, in a very clever fashion, uh -huh. stack as many books as possible that you think I can carry without looking a fool and without toppling over, I will carry those for you, but only in one stack and it cannot fall over. Okay, okay. But I will say, whether you look a fool is up to you. Are we not all fools if we believe ourselves to be fools? You are shameless enough and you are never a fool, right? Hmm. You have a... Away with words that always seems to tickle my fancy. I, perhaps I am willing to carry two stacks, but once again, they must be expertly arranged so that nothing will fall. Um, 
it, does this work? Is this are these fair terms this, for the game? I will one hundred percent agree to these terms. This is a compromise I am willing to make. She quickly tries to start the stacking situation. Does like probably like biggest to smallest thinks is that good or like tries to dub it by like all the same size. Continues different methods and like lifts a little bit and like almost falls over because uh, the Adoja, unlike uh, Zainab, is not very built. She is a very frail, very thin. Even though she is uh, not white, she is kind of pale for her coloring. She's very uh, obviously doesn't get out much. And so she like picks things up like three books and it's like, oh, so heavy, <laughs> like puts them down and tries to look like did like she didn't do that in Brazil because that'd be embarrassing and like tries to hide. I suppose part two of our game will be to figure out um, one, what the limit is on number of books you can check out at once and then to figure a way around it because I doubt it's 30. That's a fair point. Maybe I can use like my family name. It's pretty useless most of the time, but in libraries, they let me get away with much more. Mm. I like the sound of that. This is um, a much more fun way to spend an event like this than, I mean, we do need to go and rub shoulders a little bit. My siblings and my parents would be remiss if I was at, not at least seen a little bit. Um, I'm sure your parents are feeling the same way, but we could do so on our terms. I would agree to it. I enjoy, I like the idea of accompanying you this time. I could come with you, meet the family, say hello. My name is Theodosia Kutan. I could do a little curtsy. It'll be very good. I won't fall over this time. I know I fell over like the last three times, but that's very different. The dress was really heavy. I feel like I should be forgiven. But this time I will make myself a perfect lady and my parents will not lecture me afterwards. These are good terms. <laughs> Just a note from the host. A reminder, this is a private library for the family. Listen. Listen. So perhaps the, the limit is zero that we can check out, but... You will learn. But I just but want to put that in the out. players' minds. Yeah, so she's good. 100% Theo's going to try. She knows nope. his private library and still nope. is going to try. That's perfectly fine. I just wanted to set the expectations with the player. Uh, You're letting us know that this is potentially a heinous action that we're like about the, to commit. Chris, I really appreciate you letting me know that this is a bad choice, but I'm going to let you know as a player, I'm going to make the bad choice. I'm going to, it's a bad choice. I'm, cho I'm going to make it. You can this make a, any choice you want, this, any this time is, you want. This feels like a very serious uh, event, and this is a mm -hmm. private library, and in that, Theodosia is still going to do it, because she Love wants it. the books. She just wants the books. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I, I dig it. So, um, as this conversation is going on, I'm going to move to Cassandra. Did Cassandra come inside? Did Cassandra Sorry. stay in the courtyard? Where do we find Cassandra? Oh. Oh, no. Following along, playing in glass. Hello? Oh, we got, you, we got you back now. Okay. I said she's followed along and she's holding up her ribbon to look at the to see if she can see the light through it, mm -hmm. <laughs> through, the, through the glass. And she's just kind of listening and she says, the perfect lady. <laughs> there, Nikki goes. I feel so bad. Internet. She was here. She talked about ribbits. It was so cute. Mm. While Cassandra is looking uh, through her ribbons. I'm here. Oh, welcome back. Uh, we lost you at Perfect Lady. And then it cut out. Oh, no. It says just... Just how she said it. <laughs> okay. It's a perfect lady. Love it. Um, 
It, and so just following along, anything in particular that Cassandra would like to do at this point, or just a, more of a wallflower observing at, uh, at this stage? She will pick up a book to kind of try to fit in. You randomly pick up a book and it's a decent sized tome. It has um, uh, a nice um, binding. It's or actually, I should say it's an ornate binding. There's a lot of fun texture to it. Uh, it is um, brightly colored and painted in a variety of um, Mm. Nat nature motifs, I should say. Lots of flora and fauna across it. Well, this book is absolutely perfect for me. Wonderful. Um, you're not sure where that where that voice came from, but you heard the word "wonderful." You still with us, Nikki? Okay. Uh, yeah. Uh, Nikki, why don't you give your PC a restart? You're totally fine on our end, and I'll just set things up again. Don't even worry mm -hmm. about it. And while that's happening, yeah, just give it, just give it a whole reboot. See if that works. Thanks. While our Cassandra Back. Um, restarts and, um, well, or shall we say, fades to the background of the scene. Kate, where do we find you? You will find me fixing the, the cameras. Uh, Kate <laughs> is uh, kind of loitering about, um, imbibing on some champagne, nibbling on some uh, bits and bobs from the table, uh, passing off her glass very quickly and picking up a fresh one. Uh, she is here to see and be seen. This is, after all, a private party and um, there's very elaborate, luxurious, rich patrons visiting so it's best to rub elbows where the elbows are there to be rubbed indeed you'll have uh, noticed as you're perusing that there seems to be um <clears throat> one uh woman who's here with not only what looks to be some sort of um bodyguard but also a maidservant she's must have quite the um, wealth to be flaunting. Uh, oh, oh, you said a woman with a maidservant? Yeah, and, uh, and a bodyguard. And a bodyguard. Mm. Uh, I'm going to um, sail up a bit and um, eavesdrop while perusing one of the more nicer looking tomes. Just flipping through the pages, but looking over, flipping pages, listening in. 
you hear some sort of conversation about how many books she'll be able to actually carry out and um, whether or not looking foolish is all in one's attitude and uh, perception or if it's more of a social construct. Seems to be a little philosophical and um, a bit materialistic at the same time. Uh, when I overhear her talking about uh, whether she look foolish, uh, I sidle up and um, it's it's all in the in the mannerisms. If you don't if you don't let them know, they'll never know. Oh, I think she like at this time Theodosia is picking up like three books and like almost drops them and is like, zoom up, zoom up, zoom up. Oh, right, I, 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 I just, like do this thing where I kind of like try to help push him back down and go, ah, uh, my thoughts exactly. I'm Theodosia. What's your name? Kate Clark. It's a pleasure. Nice to meet you. Clark is in the 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 nobles Clark, or maybe the ones who are distantly related to a um what are they what are they royals or cousins of the royals or maybe they're cousins? Mm, distant cousins, yeah. yes. Were they the London Clarks? Oh, or in textiles oh. mostly. Oh, oh, I I I didn't I don't know if I've heard of you. Um, I don't really keep track of all the names, you know. It's all so many of them. There's just so very many, many lords and ladies, earls and cousins of earls and cousins of cousins they, of earls and so on. They never end. Sometimes I try to keep track on the journal and then I get them confused and then I think that people are dating their cousins, but really they're just married and that's why they're the same name. <laughs> it you happens know? all the time. Sam, do you have this happen to you? <laughs> um, it, yes, of, of um, of course. And at Zainab has actually stiffened quite a bit and taken kind of a respectful step back from the Lady Theodosia and from this newcomer, kind of letting them start to have their conversation without Zainab being like an intruder upon it. Um, but at the mention of London specifically, their body kind of hardens a little bit and they have kind of one hand that's holding probably three or four books that almost hit the ground a few moments ago. And the other one is very casually going to um, kind of where her sword hangs at her side. So another thing that makes Zeynep cut a very um, interesting figure is that they carry this long and beautiful silver blade at their side. And it's a very comfortable gesture. It's not threatening. It's almost as if, um, they're nervous for some reason and are moving into a comfortable stance, but they they freeze a bit when their name is mentioned. No, yes, no, of, uh, of course, I I agree. This is this is my uh, escort slash bodyguard, Zainab. Zainab, uh, uh, this is our new friend. Pleasure, Zainab. It is a pleasure wow. to you meet you. You seem quite uncomfortable. You must relax. This is a private party, after all. Are, are you uncomfortable, Zainab? Is it in the books? I knew I had too many books. I just thought that maybe I should carry it. Is it too much? I'm sorry. No, the books are actually the best part of this party. The, the worst part is that it's a private gathering, though it might be a little bit improprietous for me to speak so freely. Um, I'm so sorry. I do not mean to um, rain on your parade. I like it when you speak freely. Isn't it fun, Miss Clark? It's the best. Certainly it's always, best. it makes the whole conversation. I mean, we're all quite young, aren't we? I like look at between us. I genuinely don't know. I'm just saying that we're all quite young. We could be practically child made school friends, huh? Why be all stiffy and uh, deplorable? That's quite not fun, right? We had the rest of our lives to be boring. Well, and the best secrets are shared between friends anyway. I agree. Oh, what brings you to this party, Miss Clark? Oh, well, I'm here on matters of business. I've traveled quite a bit abroad, and father sent me uh, overseas quite a ways away. New place. Oh. Always uh, networking to be done. Oh, I hope that this uh, party is uh, quite worth the journey. Well, this is, uh, this is one party I've been to of many. I've been here for about six months now, so. What? Well, did you hear that? Six months? Have you found things that are interesting? Uh, very different. The food is quite um, something to get used to. The tea is just a whole process and baffling, but very entertaining. 
Zeynep, do you find RT bad? I don't know. I've never really thought deeply no, about no, whether it's bad. good or bad. Just, you know, you oh. pour it from one cup into the but it's not a not a teapot. It's oh, a different method then. Oh, that is interesting. Is it different cultural differences? How fun! You must teach me how you um, make tea sometime. Maybe today they probably have a kitchen somewhere. I do make a very good pot of tea. That's that's true. Uh, I think. Oh, would you would you like to um, help me try to figure out the best way to stack these books? Oh, you probably find that boorish and would rather go uh, talk to everyone else. Oh, I don't I don't find it boorish at all. But I I do have matters to attend to. Uh, you can see she's desperately trying to not let it be known that she is just like, wow, this woman talks a lot. <laughs> <laughs> the Dorsha does not catch on. Just like the very not subtle, like, I, like, I want to be. Do you think Zainab and her are making those eyes like, she talks a lot, and she's like, yeah, she does. <laughs> like, the, like the slow step back, and then another step back while you're still continuing to talk. <laughs> where like Kate might look uncomfortable every time uh, Theo opens her mouth to speak more. Zainab actually just nods with this very patient uh, nod because for every moment that Theo is speaking, Zainab does not have to be speaking, which she would prefer, especially given this sort of social event. Mm -hmm. um, so Zainab has no idea why they're being given these eyes, just Yes, I completely agree. There are many differences that you can notice between different peoples when you travel. Uh, I will I will look at her backing up and then try to take the social cue. Oh, I will let you take your leave then. It was very nice to make your acquaintance. That's right. Theodosia. I won't forget. Yeah. She's saying, did you hear that? She said she wouldn't forget me. How lovely is that? Perhaps you've made a new friend. That would be fun, wouldn't it? She seems so lovely, so fancy, so luxurious. Those in London must have it much better than us. I'll start stacking books for two. <laughs> As you return to stacking books, we're going to pan over to Ella. Where we last left Ella. I'm hunting down that curator. Mm -hmm. Had none. And um, you will find, um, well, you'll find Adnan at the center of things. Um, try, um, basically trying to show people how the Athenaeum is uh, organized and uh, kind of give them a rundown of what they can find. And it's at the large front um well, just inside the large front double doors, uh, he's kind of walking around leading a group of people, um, almost tour guide-like, um, and he gestures out into the courtyard and starts describing the different uh, fauna um, and flora that can be found there, the bird species that tend to make uh, roost in the, um, the trees, and as well as a variety of other things. Um, creatures. What do you do at this point? Ella will at first wait patiently. Um, but the, the longer the description goes on, the less patient Ella becomes. Um, and she just sort of starts tapping her foot, starts um, moving her hands around until eventually she'll just say, excuse me. And uh, Adnan will turn to you and go, ah, yes. I wonder if you could uh, tell me about this scroll. Hmm. Indeed. And he'll turn to the group and then back to you uh, and, and kind of gesture that direction and turn back to you and say, this scroll is, uh, may I? And then reach out Um his hands for it. She'll hand it over. This is one of our collection that came from um, Egypt, uh, particularly from the libraries there. It was part of an exchange of scholarly works. It is here on loan uh, for mm, 
It's been here for about a year and a half and will return in about the same amount of time. It is connected to um, the pharaohs and actually lists lineages and the um, rituals done to preserve them into the afterlife. It is considered a sacred scroll of many types, depending on who you talk to, but it is not the most sacred as in such, um, as in such lending would lead to some sort of disrespect between cultures. What else would you like to know about it? Is it read often? Read? Um, it hasn't been perused, I think, since... Mm, no, not since uh, Nahir had acquired it uh, in her dealings. Nahir? Yes. Nahir. Why did she choose this one? It was part of um, some, shall we say, political connecting. And he'll you'll watch him turn and look at the group of people there and then back to you to answer your question. Uh, political connecting between different regions. Uh, she was looking to make a positive cultural exchange. Hmm. I understand. Must it stay here? Oh, yes. I mean, all everything that's in here stays here. It's part of the Senge uh, private library. Though, those who are friends of the family are allowed to come and peruse its collections at any time. Uh, this is the first opening we've done for a more public group of individuals in decades. It was at Nahir's request that we did this. Huh. I look forward to speaking with Nahir more. Oh, excellent. She's making her rounds uh, throughout. You will find her eventually, uh, or she will find you. She's looking to meet each and every person that shows up here. Um, she, the reason that she said she opened the library is she wanted to bring like-minded individuals together, those who have scholarly pursuits. I would like this very much. That do is you know where she was last? Uh, I do not. However, um, I'm sure it will not take long for her to make her presence known. Uh, she is a unassuming of individual. Different, different conversation, different conversation. Uh, where I found this scroll. Mm, yes. Uh, how is the library organized? Uh, well, on this floor, which is where that scroll came from, in uh, the, we call that the, um, lounge area, you'll notice that there are a large number of um, plush pillows on benches uh, with backs for you to be able to rest and read. Um, it's more of a backdrop piece, as many people don't pick it up to read it. You're the, the only the second person I've ever uh, discussed it with before since Nahir uh, acquired it. Uh, however, that is, um, most of the things there are display pieces, but intermingled within them are pleasure reading. So there is no theme to them? Not in that, not on the first floor. Second, second and third floor mm -hmm. have a little bit more, well, the third floor especially has more of an archival feel as uh, it is where we also sort through new acquisitions. But... Uh, the second floor is a little bit more, um, shall we say, uh, grouped for scholarly pursuits. I see. Who was the first person? The first person. Um, what was that gentleman's name? 
It was about, um, about three weeks after Nahir's acquisition of it. We hadn't yet put it out, so it would have still been on the third floor. He was a very tall gentleman. Hmm. Like, strikingly oh. so. A, uh, a religious religious man of the, um, the, the, the Christian faith. Um, ah, I don't re- I, I don't see. recall his name, but um, I would definitely recognize him again. You don't see many people that stand that tall. No, you definitely don't. Thank you for your help. I will go look for Nahir now. And she doesn't wait to say goodbye. She just turns around and walks off in a direction. Excellent. As Ella walks off and... Cassandra has pulled back to the foreground. We hear the words, or the word, wonderful, as you gaze upon this book that you found. What do you do? Do I see anybody saying it? Is anybody around me? Do you turn and look around? Yes. Uh, As behind you, is a very well-dressed woman. Um, Bronze skin uh, in complexion, um, striking eyes. Um, You find her uh, her dark black hair uh, only rivaled by that of shadow. Uh, It is almost just absorbs the light. She has a very kind smile that permeates both her eyes as well as her lips. And she says, what about it draws your attention? I like your enthusiasm. I like the cover, the colors and the texture. It is a gorgeous piece, isn't it? Yes. Are you familiar with it? Very much so. I've read it mm, half a dozen times. Oh, what is it about? It's actually a little bit scientific, um, but it was written by a uh, poet. Uh, Inside, you'll actually find lines and lines of poetry that use metaphor to describe the world around us. Each poem a exploration of a sensation in nature, a place, a um, creature, a flower. You find them all across the pages. And they are Oh, that sounds lovely. (laughs) I really hope you take the time to read it before you leave. I would... What yes, bring- before I leave. Mm-hmm. Definitely. Uh, what brings you to the Athenaeum today? I was You'll notice ordered you have her to full leave attention. my ribbons. Oh, your ribbons. I was ordered to leave my ribbons and pillows. Hmm. Yes. And who gave really you these nice. orders? Um, <laughs> I'm sorry. I've, no worries. <laughs> I, I I only ask because I've never heard someone ordered <laughs> to go to a library and to leave behind ribbons and pillows. It just strikes. I'll me look around. Interesting. Oh, I needed to get out. Apparently, I was spending too much time inside. Mm. And you so many nice things. Uh, Cassandra will note that behind her, oh, six to seven feet away, um, that is where uh, Theodosia is stacking books, and Zainab is trying to keep them from toppling over or um, hold them. Um, and 
a woman with vibrant red hair had just made her exit. I'm looking over at them. Mm -hmm. Just kind of smiling because I think it's fun. They look like they're having fun to me. Mm -hmm. Even if, if they're not, <laughs> it looks fun to me. <laughs> and then I look to see if the um, woman with the dark hair is still there. Mm -hmm. And she goes, oh, how rude is of she me. Still My name is uh, Nahir Senge. Uh, what is yours? Cassandra Bonner. Cassandra? Oh. You have a beautiful name. One with a storied history to it. Hmm. Do read that book before you leave today. Or at least a few of its pages. Yes, I read them. I will, oh. thank you. Good, good, good. Have a wonderful evening. I hope you do the same. And she will kind of take her leave and move past you very elegantly um, toward those that you looked at. So uh, Theodosia and um, Zainab. And I imagine her walking kind of up behind because Cassandra was kind of following the other two as uh, she went along. And so you'll... And she will kind of not stand behind Theodosia, but she'll mosey around to the side to place herself between um, the transaction going on here and say, oh, I haven't seen someone so excited about books since I was a child. Hello. So sorry. I am trying to find, figure out a way to be able to give them all to my bodyguard, Zainab, uh, to check out. Check out. Hmm. You know, this is a library, right? It is a private library, yes. Do you not check out at private libraries? Mm, think of it more like a collection. You have to forgive me. I mostly only go to my own library. I'm often not allowed outside the house. But now I have Zinnip, so I can leave. Ah. That sounds as if I'm being held captive. I am not being held captive. I'm not. That sounds now. It sounds like I'm extra sounding captive because I'm being so defensive. So you don't tell her I'm not being held captive. She is not being held captive, which sounds very convincing when I say it. When she tells me to, I agree. It sounds extremely good. just like your practice. Yeah, it feels really reassuring and very natural. When I say that, it sounds worse. I'm realizing this now. I'm Theodosia Kratal. It's nice to meet you. Nice to meet you, Theodosia. My name what is, is Nahir Senge. Oh, the host! Oh, this is so, I do a very dramatic courtesy, the most dramatic, and then I struggle to get back up. Ah. It is so lovely to meet you. Thank you so much for the invite. Mm, I am so glad to see so many people um, coming out. It I'm was very surprising. It was so surprising. My parents asked me if uh, I would be going and I didn't think that maybe you would want to see the, the daughter of the Kartals. I often don't leave the house or are invited to too many balls. They're very uh, loud. My parents worry that it will hurt my ears. I understand. Um, there was a time when my parents were very concerned about my well-being when I went places. So it is a phase that they go through as they learn to let go and to trust those that they spent so many years caring for and protecting. Miss Nahair, if I may ask, mm -hmm. at what age would you say they stopped? Oh, I don't know that they ever truly stopped. They just quit voicing it as much, to be honest <laughs> with you. Uh, but um, maybe around your 23rd, 24th birthday, they might let you venture more. Um, if they haven't sent you uh, on a grand tour of uh, notable cities yet, um, you could probably leverage them for that uh, and, and get out and kind of 
have them confront their own insecurities in your absence. Oh, you are a very wise woman, miss. Mm. I hope to use you more in my allyship but to leverage this against my family in the most positive and not messed up way. Right, Zenith? Exactly. And we see Zainab is trying so hard to keep a straight, very respectable and appropriate expression. But every single time Theo says something that's just so delightful and unexpected, a smile tugs at the corner of, of their lips. Just just a little bit more each time. I think Theo is doing that thing where when you're in a group of friends and you're realizing you're the only one talking and you feel very guilty. So you turn to your friends, you're like, friends, join in conversation. But then she remembers Zinev doesn't want to be in the conversation. So she asks like one word responses. So she's like, you're included, but not too much. <laughs> uh, and here we'll turn to Zainab and go, um, my, my dear Zainab, um, this is a casual affair. You can relax. I promise, it is okay. I keep telling her that, but she does not believe me. I say, oh, just come in there. She goes, oh, I'd like to call you lady. And I say, well, just walk up beside me. She goes, I'll walk behind you. And I say, well, you can just walk next to me. And then they just stand like 50 feet away. And it's just very upsetting. 50 feet away, that is quite a distance. I might is there a reason for that? I may be exaggerating, just a oh. touch, just a touch. Well, fair enough. Um, now, I do have a curious question, though. I have a, a, a sort of answer. Which of you was it that ordered dear Cassandra to get out and socialize more? Technically, yeah, don't you <laughs> technically, it was neither of us and no one. I like to... Um, she she works within my family's household. It is um, I I must introduce myself properly. My name is uh, Zeynep Orgalagos, and she'll bow very respectfully. Um, thank you so much for hosting us, uh, Lady Senge. Um, but in truth, Cassandra works within my family's household, and she hardly ever goes outside. And the sun is so nice on your skin, and there are so many lovely things inside. Mm -hmm. of the home, but there are also so many lovely things to see when you step out. So sometimes a little bit of gentle encouragement can sound like an order, but I promise I'm never so pushy. That makes complete sense to me. Um, she is special. I like her. She is practically a member of my family. And it is, it is nice for her to accompany us to a place that I thought might be filled with other lovely things. Mm. I'm glad that that was your expectation and I hope that it proves accurate. I'd like to say Theo is excitedly looking between the two, like this is going really well. <laughs> I'm giving Zaynab a face like, are we all being friends? Is this a friend? <laughs> are we about to become besties right now? <laughs> I'm sure Zaynab is like used to this face because Theodosia makes it every time she interacts with anybody. Like Zaynab says three words to anyone. And she's like, are we, did we just all become best friends right now in this moment? Uh -huh. This is why I'm here. <laughs> excellent, excellent. I have never known anyone to be so excited about uh, ribbons and pillows. It is quite charming. <laughs> we all have things that delight us. For me, it is um, the distinct privilege of being able to um, ensure the safety and well-being, but also the freedom of um, one such as the Lady Kartal. Mm -hmm. That is very noble of you. But what about the things that fuel you on a... Mm. more primal level. There's, when Cassandra had mentioned it, when she had said those words, it reminded me of the excitement that we have when we're young, before we're told what is acceptable and what isn't. The excitement that fuels who we are, in a way. 
noble pursuits are noble and should be given high esteem. But there must be something that rejuvenates you, not just pushes you. I have never known someone who always wears a blade at their hip, who does not do so because it fuels them. That might be an actual Theodosia reaction of her going like, yeah. <laughs> well, and Zainab says this with a level of gravity and mm -hmm. seriousness, um, allowing Nahir to think what she wants to, but also trying to signal that Zainab understands that she carries a blade, something that in equal measure can mm -hmm. protect and harm. That is fiery. Hmm. But I could introduce you to a few. The poet that I just taught, uh, told Cassandra about. Other people with primal drives, as you put it. No, people who wear a blade at their hip everywhere they go and are not fueled by it. Potato, potato, I think is the same. Theodosia I've not nods. heard that one, but that, I, I will have nods. to look into it. I need to nods like this is actually 100% correct, knowing full well it's not. She does not, she will not disagree with Zainab. She loves her too much. She's like, yes, I agree, strong agree. Potato, potato, you know what they say. And I, potato, potato. Hmm. West other countries. Anyways, it was, thank you so much for the invite. Yes, yes, yes. Feel free to peruse and stay as long as you want to read. Um, I will read all of these in the sitting or I will return at another time. Would that be all right? Of course. You're I would like quite, your company. You, would... you, you are welcome here anytime. Just um, let us know that you are coming in advance so we can make sure that there is someone here to greet you. I very much appreciate it. Oh, and Nahe Madame Nahir, mm -hmm. your library is beautiful. Thank you. It is my family's library and goes back centuries, but it is one of my refueling pieces, if you will. You have great taste then, obviously. Thank you. And she will take her leave. Theodosia and... does another curtsy, but this time she falls. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh. Are, you, are you okay? Oh, yeah, I do it all the time. Then can you please help me? <laughs> yes, of course. And, and of course, an arm is out to yeah, you know, she pulls that, like, herself steady off. support. I'm not used to wearing the heavier dresses worn outside. I do understand. not worry, I will get faster. We will... Um... If it's not too presumptuous, I will send a seamstress to your house to fix that issue. Um, if, yes, I, if I may. That is so grateful and great, generous of you. I, I don't know if I can accept. My parents will ask a lot of questions. What did you do? Did you embarrass us? And then I will say, yes, I have. Of course I have. Are you sure it's all right? Your parents will say no such thing. Yes, they will be May I just say, step a little, like a little close to stepping that line of propriety of standing too close to someone. Mm -hmm. A little bit okay because they're both ladies and be like, I must say, you have an aura about you that I quite like. It reminds me of the heroes of my stories I read. I find it very charming. Is it not charming, Zainab? Quite. <laughs> that is a wonderful compliment. And I am delighted to hear it from you. She bows but, again, this time less less mm. shaky. <laughs> and she will turn and leave, but she only makes it a few steps before she almost walks right into a very determined walk of a Ella with a scroll. Hello. Mm. Hello. Are you enjoying yourself? 
Yes, there are lots of books. Yes, there are books, there are antiquities, there are art, works of art. Yes. And some of, our, some of them are all three of those combined. Like what you have there. It is not only historically relevant, it is also chock full of information and beautifully crafted. You can read it. Oh, yes, I can read it. What does it say? Well, it says quite a number of things. It's a fairly long scroll. Is there a particular topic you're looking for within its words that I can confirm or deny and then give you more details if it's there? It's age, it's very old. Why did you choose this one? Well, twofold. One, it has cultural significance, but not too much that it would be an imposition to ask for that in exchange. Uh, two, it tells one story of a people, but from a perspective that does not match the way that story is typically told. You see that scroll before you is written by I don't know what they would have called that person during that time, but we might call them a physician or um, in more crude terms, sometimes an undertaker, uh, a, a gravesman. Um, it's written by the person who buried the dead. I have a lot of interest in this. Do you have any others like this? Hmm. From Egypt specifically? Mm, any others telling a story of this nature from this perspective? I believe so, but I would have to consult my records. I would not want to lead you astray. Hmm. How did you come up across it? I was in Cairo visiting um, a family there that we have business connections with. Um, they had a, mm, we'll say someone of more uh, scholarly pursuits, uh, but who also makes rounds in political circles. I wish to get to know them better, so I asked to see their collection. I learned of what they truly um, can and cannot do um, in their sphere of influence. And then I proposed something that I felt would be intellectually stimulating to them, which an exchange of culture. I see. Did they have others? They had a large number of Egyptian works. I did not peruse them all to know if they are of that same topic, though, hmm. or written by an author of a similar profession. I would assume, uh, based on some of the artwork that this individual um, proudly displayed, that this is not unique within their co collection. I see. It is good of you to open your library to everyone. I wanted to see how many people would find themselves empowered to walk through those doors and see what's inside. People like you, hmm. who have a very strong and determined um, persona shall we say. It is refreshing. Most of the things that I go to, people are either blustering or their shows of strength are more, shall we say, militant in nature. Yours is not. It is just as sharp, but not as 
shall we say, malicious. Hmm. Interesting perspective you have there. Thank you. She looks around to the other people that are just sort of standing there that she didn't notice until now. You know, Dana, did you see how pretty that girl was? That girl was really pretty. The host is like so pretty, right? She is very lovely. She's like the and, pretty. And has quite the tongue. I thought that your back and forth was quite breathing. Uh, stimulating would be another word for it. I'd like to see you become good friends with her. It might be interesting to have someone at your level. I am sadly high in many things, but not in uh, intellect, let's say. Maybe book smarts, street smarts, not so much. You have many fine qualities, Lady Cartal. You do, you do not need to be looking for areas where you are deficient. You were too kind. I like turned because I realized that was a stare guess. Hello, I'm Theodosia. I like do the curtsy and this time I stay so, like I'm trying so hard to stay upright that I look way too stiff. Theodosia Katal, it's a pleasure to meet you. We have met. Oh, have we? Yeah. She is a perfect lady. Oh, we have, we have met Miss, uh, many yes. times? Yes, just once. I met you to speak about uh, your medical history. Stares off into the distance. Ah, yes, right. Ah, well, look at the time on the clock that's near me that I can see at this sit up let's go i like gross sit up and try to run <laughs> but badly obviously um it, uh, uh lady malas it's a pleasure to meet you and zainab's eyes kind of dart following theo Zainab. uh i am um my name is zainab oikolaikos and it's a pleasure to meet you i am have the distinct honor of being lady cartel's escort right so and I, we can I go must let's be going have you met Cassandra? Cassandra! Wonderful. <laughs> uh, definitely Theodosia freaking out because she does not want anyone to know about what's going on with her history. Kate She's is like... just watching this from afar, just... <laughs> I was about to ask how far away Kate got before this transpired, so... Uh, not far, maybe like five feet. Like, she's still very much there, but doing her own thing. Like, clearly I've separated herself from the conversation, mm -hmm. but she's just full on watching this spectacle now. She's now, full on, now. <laughs> just he's did, dropping. Did you just like like pick something up and look like you're trying to thumb through it and peruse it, At but first, really you're watching? yes, yeah. and now she's just straight up just watching. She's just. <laughs> <laughs> Love it. Love it. Um, so as Theodosia tries to, or turns around and, and and sees Cassandra and tries to use her as a distraction. Cassandra, how do you how do you react to that? I'm not sure what she's doing. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um. With my gloves. <laughs> okay. And where, what did she make the glove out of, out of curiosity? Oh, we lost Nikki. We'll never know what the glove is. We'll never is. know. <laughs> the mystery of the game, the glove. It's magic. It, the it answer is magic. Itself. Who the and tall friendship. man is and what the glove was made of. <laughs> Keeps giving us uh, cliffhangers. Who is uh, the tall man? The, the plot writes itself. It is really? lovely. So, um,
Do we have audio for Cassandra? Well, then we will let things kind of continue to um, develop, shall we say. And uh, she will say, oh, uh, yes, just behind us um, is uh, Theodosia Cartal, who is already planning on trying to read half my library in one sitting. Um, if you will um, allow it, of course. Of course. That is fine. Um, I have extended to her uh, due to her, shall we say, zest for reading, uh, an invitation to return at any time, um, with proper notice, of course, uh, so we can have someone to make the building available to you uh, to read the, um, the works that are within here. I would extend the same to you, Lady Malas. Um, I appreciate that. hate to be too presumptuous, but I do know of your parents. They are respected. Thank you. I peek behind Zana and then hide again. <laughs> um, so you are welcome to come by at any point. And since you um, already know the cartels, uh, you could join them if uh, when Theodosia returns. Uh, she does seem a bit, shall Skittish. we say, yeah, skittish is good. I was thinking more <gasps> lively and full of energy. And oh, a the opposite. More, a more um, focused mind might be good for her. What is she reading? Everything. What, is, what am I not reading? Am I right? I, as I turn, I or, as Nahir turns and kind of points at the stack of books that she had built. Uh, there's like 30 of them or so. There's definitely probably like a lot of uh, fiction, like a lot of fiction, like incredible amounts. Like there's not a real, like all just stories of like adventures and romance. And she's just peeking around, looking at uh, and then hiding and then saying like in her head, like, I'm, I'm going to say something. It's going to be really smart. But then she just doesn't say it. Lady Cartel, are you afraid of me? Are you? No, afraid of you, that's unfair. I would never say that I am afraid of you. What I'm afraid, I'm not afraid. Hmm. Fear is something interesting, isn't it? Uh, it, it, it? It plagues us in the most inconvenient times, like when I would like to read. The general you, I think you mean to say. I, I turn around, Miss Clark, you're still here. Oh, yes. Have you met... Uh, uh, the Miss Malas. I, I try to, once again, try to push off someone else to talk to her and then hide again. I have not. Kate Clark. At Hello. Your service. Ella Malas. Are you with the two of them as well? Three? Uh, I wasn't. With is a strong word. Acquainted, is, knows, yeah. seen one time, you know, had a whole medical survey, different things, you know, everything's different. Oh, we all know each other. Oh, very Aren't all humans knowing each other in some capacity? Anyways, these books, <laughs> I'm trying to push the ones in them. I'm going to oh, just shut the one that I'm holding and stack it on top of her stack. <laughs> Since you're cleaning up. <laughs> cleaning up is a fun way to describe mm. reading as many books as possible. Don't you agree, agree Miss Nahir? Uh, that is one way to put it, yes. If you are trying to, um, shall we say, eliminate a to-do list. Um, Miss Mollis is, a, is a, of the medical science field. She knows a lot of things. Mm -hmm. She's a well-educated she woman. Uh, you might like her, Miss Clark. Miss Clark is from London. Oh, Miss Clark. You come a long way to grace my Athenaeum. Thank and it's you. not too out of the way. 
I was just in Belgium after all. I mean, not Belgium, uh, Berlin after all. Oh, ah, Berlin. That is a um, interesting place in these times. Any particular business there or just passing through? Visiting cousins. Ah, cousins. I see. Um, you were here on business. I like I'm here over. on business, yes. Berlin, I was visiting cousins. Ah. Very large family. Hmm. Understandably so. There are um, many families like that who travel quite a bit as well. Hmm. Uh, I am one. My family is widespread and uh, also travels. I ever go to London? Maybe you and you two uh, have acquaintances in common. There's very many people in London. All right. Are you cousins? I, I don't. We are not cousins. I don't I'm not so. Cassandra's because I think that's a very good question. Oh, yes. <laughs> they must be cousins. <laughs> ah, London is small. <laughs> <laughs> no, not, not related. I mean, we're all. True, we are all humans, and aren't all humans connected as previously stated? Yes? You all have mm -hmm. a very philosophical view on the world. <laughs> Not all of us are as uh, scientific as you. There's uh, only a few ways you can understand the world if we don't understand it acutely in science, like faith or love or very romantic point of view. I'm often told that I see things far too romantically. Uh, Rose-colored glasses? Or something. Hmm. But I find it it is very uh, nice. Like roses. <laughs> They're the yes. best, aren't they? You like roses? I do. Roses are wonderful. They bloom quite beautifully and together. Plus they are the most romantic flower. Don't you think they're so romantic, Zinep? There are many flowers that can be used to indicate romantic interest. I've always been particularly for partial to the um, to the white ones with the soft petals. Hmm. Of which there are a very large, many number of those. Yes. Indeed. I, I personally am fond of tulips. Tulips? I like do this motion and everything. I know they're common around here and they grow basically everywhere. Is it a flower? Yes, it's a flower. Um, but there's something about them. Not sure yes, what it is. is. Ella? Is, is Nahir doing the thing where she stares off into the middle distance and I should be concerned? <laughs> mm, I wouldn't be concerned about it, no. Okay. Um, cool, cool, cool. But there is a little bit of wistfulness to her voice. I like the way you portrayed that. It sounded very romantic. Do you have romantic um, a fiance or Mary? Are you married, Miss Meher? I am not. <gasps> a shame you are too beautiful not to be. Uh, that is what my mother continues to tell me. And I'm... until there is a partner that will not stand in my way, I will <gasps> be single. That's the I... ticket. I greatly envy whoever is to marry you, Miss Nahir. I bet they are to be very capable as you are. I would hope so, lest I spend that much time with them. I want to give you all flowers. I would love a flower. Instantly, Theodosia is having a great time now. <laughs> Ella, do you want a flower? Even scientists must like flowers a little bit, maybe on like a chemical level, maybe you like pollen a lot, I don't know. I do keep a garden. They smell wonderful. Oh. They... Have a flower. Ooh, what kind of flower? Oh my God, I need what to is know. This? Yes. What kind of flower did you hand her? It's a purple. A purple flower? A purple. Where did I she find it? She picked it up outside. Could you just picked it from the garden. Okay. <laughs> like that's mine. The rich lady. 
then it will actually pro uh, we're gonna go with tulip it's a purple tulip <laughs> the purple tulip i love that oh your favorite miss Neher. yes that there is a tulip you had asked before cassandra if it was a flower you had one in your possession this entire time cassandra has I like flowers very, cassandra's a very eccentric character isn't she lovely uh, she absolutely is. Very well, hey, exactly. Very, yes, yes. So, Ella, you had said you had a garden. Yes. I <clears throat> I keep a garden, yes. That um, is all I suspect from you being a doctor. For the most part, yes. I do. I am also partial to tulips. So, yes, I keep those. Hmm. I knew you were someone of good taste. Oh, yes. But, as you probably know better than I, something can be beautiful and useful, or shall we say medically relevant, um, at the same time. They do not have to be separate. Of course. Tulips are wonderful for colds and flus. They're they are edible. Yes. Is Cassandra going to pull out another tulip and eat it? <laughs> I'm curious. Cassandra, yes. Do it. Yes, Cassandra. <laughs> Theodosia doesn't even blink. Theodosia thinks this is dope. She thinks it's fine. She's like, oh. I like stare at the flower for a long time and I look at the Zenith like, can I? You know that vine where they're like, before you do something, you should ask somebody you love. If it's okay, and they're like, I love you. Can I eat this flower? Like that kind of meme. But uh -huh. she looks at her as like, looks at the flower, looks at it, up, looks at the flower. Uh, uh. Uh, uh. <laughs> the the, the I, flower might be nice in the mouth, but it um, a tulip is always better on the heart. It's um, if if I'm not mistaken, it's a flower that doesn't just mean love, but that deepest, most perfect kind. That kind of star-crossed lovers and plays always talk about. I instantly hold the um, tulips close to my chest. <gasps> How are lovers star-crossed? The stars are up there. It's a romantic phrasing, Cassandra. It's like they are destined to be apart for rivalry or their family hates each other. Something very romantic and tragic like that. It's just a it's kind so of phrase. sad. Isn't it's it? It's so sad. Cassandra, if you ever would like to borrow any books of mine with Star Cross Lovers, I would love to give it to you. Or oh, better yet, I could read them to you. I get very excited. She doesn't want happy will, deaths. We'll give you flowers. Oh, a perfect exchange. And pillows and blankets. I will be cozy while reading to you. This is the perfect exchange. I get, uh, she does another happy deaths. <laughs> Yes, uh, tulips do have many layers to them. However, eating them raw is not my preferred method. Um, usually, there are other things. Ella, um, you know more about them than I. What would you have recommended for dear Cassandra here if she wanted to try a tulip for edible reasons? I would suggest cooking it first. Mm. But you don't no, have to. No cook. That's fine. You could always find someone to cook for you. There. I could. Mm -hmm. Can somebody cook tulips for me? I'm not allowed to be near anything that sounds flammable. I certainly can cook yes. and I've got two black thumbs too. I would cook for you. <gasps> Ella, that is very sweet of you. Okay. I go back to hiding cook. still. Uh, I believe Ella here is a person of many talents. <laughs> That's what my family told me before we met. Lots of talents. Lots of intelligence. Very perceptive, they said. I'm talented. I made a glove. 
I oh. see that. And what is it made of? This is the host asking. <clears throat> Not a ribbon. A ribbon. So <laughs> oh, basically, cute. ribbons that you brought with you, or one long ribbon. Did you actually like weave it, or is it just yes. like wrapped around your hand? Okay, excellent. Well then, I can see that you do enjoy ribbons ribbon. quite a bit, um, <laughs> and you're quite talented with them as well. Zainab, do you see what I mean? How her face lights up when she speaks of ribbons. It is one of the many lovely things in the world. Hmm. Ribbons, flowers, pillows, and, and soft things. I, I believe that's right. Or am I right, Cassandra? Yes. Wonderful. I imagine that to be a lovely afternoon. Hmm. Kate, was there anything here in the library that you found yourself most drawn to or um, that I could maybe help you find? Well, I'm not much of a reader. I thought I'd just come out to see uh, and admire. Hmm. I understand. It's been the talk of the town, after all. I'm glad to hear the word has gotten out. I was afraid that mm, certain someones might have tried to keep the message from reaching wide. So I'm glad that it is at least falling upon a large number of ears, and she'll look about to see people mingling in and out. And you'll have noticed, even in this amount of time, which we doesn't have to be a ton, um, there are new faces. Um, as you look around, some are that you had seen before can't be seen. They could be on another, another part of the floor. They might have gone upstairs to either the second or third, or they may have made their exit already. Um, but there does seem to be a fairly decent flow of traffic. Are my parents here? <laughs> no. Oh, no. Um, Is Zainab's parents here? Not that you've seen. Heck yeah. Party with no parents. <laughs> no um, so you are here to make connections then, I assume. It is the people that draw you in, Kate. Oh, I most enjoy people, yes. Hmm. But uh, this is a delightful group of people here. Oh, yes. Very interesting. Theodosia Beams. Delightful. What do you do with your time, Kate? Well, I was a socialite in my youth, and I went to university traveled quite a lot even spent some time in new york for some time or new amsterdam adelaide does not know one of the others i don't know when think... new york changes name <laughs> i will look that up Keep we will going. find that out uh spent some time just traveling the country visiting relatives uh but i came here for my father thought it would be best if i invested in the business a little bit more personally her family's in textile. Yes, we're in textiles. textiles. Yes, I see. And lumbering as well. On my lumbering. mother's side of the family. Uh, definitely, um, New York. New York. Now. It was sixteen sixty four when they changed 1664. the name. Sixteen sixty four. Okay. Yes. I was older than nice. I thought I would be. Huh. The more you know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, now we know you're a vampire. <laughs> oh wait, that's the other game. My that's mistake. The <laughs> hey, you never know. <laughs> hey, girls. And do you like textiles? No. No, or I lumbering? like... No, even worse, odious. Well, I like textiles and the fact that I like silks and lace and 
furs. But no, I not not particularly no. But I am a very good businesswoman, so I have a notion for these sorts of number things. I see. I don't understand doing something if you don't enjoy it. Well, that is the nature of the beast. A witch beast. What beast? The business beast. What about you? Survival beast, maybe. The spicy beast. I, I think it may be a phrase like potato, potato. Yes. <laughs> potato, potato. Yes, it's a phrase. I don't Do quite it. understand it, but it I is look a at Ella like a too. long time trying to convey it's a it's a phrase that Zeneb said. That's a real phrase, right, Ella? What's the beast's name? <laughs> <laughs> well, they're having a silent <laughs> conversation. Uh, and where did you study, Ella? Miss Malice. I uh, here, uh, everywhere, really. I travel a lot. Mm, a fellow wanderer, I see. Must be nice. Yes. To be able to leave you, the country sounds so lovely. Yes. Oh, it's always it's always very nice to um pack up and move on to the next place. Do you leave often? You don't settle down very often? No. I prefer to, um, enjoy the fresh air. Is there not fresh air in one place? Oh, no, but, you know, after a while, people become too... Too... Familiar. Familiar, yes. Oh. Hmm. I'm sorry if you feel that we have done that today. No, no, no. Like I said, you've been... Very pleasant. I'm sure you've run into it, Theodosia. People who have a tendency to show up as though they are your best friend, but only when they are in need, rather than in any form of care for yourself. I they become too familiar. I look between all the people and realizing that they have met a lot of people in their lives and me realizing I have not met that many. Yes, that is a common issue. I know Zainab. I know Cassandra. How common? I know. <laughs> yeah, she's like, I know Zainab. I know Cassandra. I know <laughs> Ella. I know. She's like, my parents. And my parents. Ah, there's two. Uh, there's two right there. That's five. Like, Second hand. Okay, we're on to two. She's like, uh, yes, that is a problem of people with uh, the more prestige and wealth you have. My parents say the more people will begin to flock to you. Uh, they they say they are protecting me from that very thing with Zenep here. Mm. Zenep yes. has a strong what did my parents call it? BS detector. Oh, it's very is that another phrase? phrase? Yes, it's a uh, it's um, I, I I think it is a swear, and I am not told I am told not to swear because mm. ladies do not swear, and especially uh, Cortals. Not where anyone can hear you. Another way of putting it is I have a sharp eye and a sharper sword, but if all goes well, I will never have to draw it. And that is, of course, the goal. Ah. That's uh, short? Sharp. Your sword is short? I thought it was sharp. Sharp. But well, I can't touch it. That you, well, not all of it is sharp, but... The parts that matter. When I they matter. But wouldn't it cut you? Mm. Potato, if, potato. Mm. Potato, potato. I do not think that phrase mean uh, applies to this situation, but I appreciate the efforts. The context has I, shifted too much. I'm unsure what the context was to begin with. So am I, but it feels really awkward in this situation. I look around because I can, she, Theodosia has a time gauging awkwardness. Yes, very awkward. Super. Cassandra and I are very well aware of how awkward it is right this moment. Mm -hmm. 
And with that, oh yes, it's moment, awkward, very <laughs> awkward. <laughs> and on that emphatic awkward, we are going to take our break. We will be back in five to ten minutes. Hold tight. We'll see you soon.
Welcome back, everyone. We left on an awkward moment, and we shall return on an equally awkward moment. As this conversation is unfolding, and the variety of information that was being shared transpired, an older gentleman makes his way to the group. He's not uh, strikingly tall. Um, he's well enough dressed, but not that of a noble per se. Um, and he is balding a bit. His hair has gone gray, uh, clean shaven. And he stands very straight, very proper. As he approaches, he makes eye contact with Theodosia. Theo would recognize this gentleman as her fiance's man. This is his mentor, his guide, his butler, his manservant, whatever someone may call it. Um, his name is Aram, E-R-E-M, Aram. And, uh, he kind of gives a, a very slight bow toward Theodosia. He just full on waves, just who knows him. Hey, Aaron, it's me, Theodosia. I'm wearing fancy dresses now. I see that. I'm wearing, this is, oh, 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 I grab him. Aram, Aram, you must meet my new bodyguard. You must know her well. Uh, she was accompanying um, the fiance after all. Uh, mm -hmm. Zenith, this is Aram. Yes, we've met. The, uh, yes, I remember that. Isn't this exciting? I now have her as a bodyguard. Isn't that fun? We're like trading mm -hmm. around. Maybe you'll be my bodyguard for like two seconds and then it'll be kind of fun. And then I'll give, and then Cassandra can go with you and then we can all do a little game of trade. Can I be your bodyguard too? Oh, yes. Wouldn't yes. that be a great idea, Zena? Yes. Well, all of this does sound exciting. Uh, um, By the way, what are you, is, 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 is Tenju, he... Tenju sends his regards, but will not be able to um, join oh. you today. Oh. Uh, his parents have requested that he, hmm, shall we say, attend a meeting for educational purposes and watch uh, his older brother negotiate. I'm sure he loves that. You You'll... know how much he truly does. Oh, and you'll I see have... it on his face that he's trying not to be sarcastic, but he also does not want to say something that would make young Tanju lose face, mm -hmm. especially in this place. And he knows who he's standing next to. He would not be so presumptuous, though, to introduce himself. Aram, uh, uh, this is the host of the evening, Miss Neher. This is uh, my fiancé's uh, butler. Uh, hmm. Manservant, a uh, man of the hour, the greatest person, the assistant the, of all assistants, his bestie from the Westie, you know. I have a question. Of him. I'm, I'm curious to see how fond you are of your fiance. <laughs> yes. Very... What's your favorite textile, Aram? I would probably have to go with silks, madam. It is a durable fabric that has many uses, can be as elegant as it can be hardy, depending on how it is crafted. But you cannot starch it. No, you should not starch a um, silk. That is true. Yes, I see. Carry on. Mm. Um, I just had the one message. Thank you. Lady Senge, for letting me interrupt the conversation. Um, 
to pass that along. I apologize that I was not first introduced before I was greeted by young Theodosia there. Sorry and about that. I got a very excited. I've known Tanju a while now, so it's just, you know, natural. Mm -hmm. He is like a friend, except for he is hired by my fiance, so he's being paid to be my friend, so I guess he's not really a friend. Anyway, He's also right here. Oh, no, yes. he, he's used to this by now, probably. Uh, you can refer to me however you like, Theodosia. You know that. Um, mm -hmm. But I must take my leave and return to Master Tanju. Um, so. We'll see you next time. I, like, do a curtsy, and I, like, hold up, like, watch this. I do my curtsy, and I watch, look at him, like, real proud of myself. Mm -hmm. <laughs> very, very nice. Thank you. are you. getting much more... Mm, shall we say, practiced. Thank you. I'm almost like a practical lady, ready for marriage. A perfect lady, if I do say so myself. Thank you, Aram. Have a good evening. You too. And he will wander off and exit the building. Uh, leaving the rest of you there to carry on with whatever it is you seek next. Are you practical and perfect? I, I think that I mean neither. Aaron is just a kind. He's rather kind to me all the time. In, in a way that even exceeds the, uh, the expectation that he set in his occupation. He's always, always kind to me. Always been. Always probably will be. Hopefully. Oh, geez. I hope so. Is he your cousin? No. Well, I mean, he's from Persia. So, well, no, he's not from Persia. He's is he from Persia? I've never thought to ask. He could be. Perhaps he's more like a uncle twice removed. Someone who is maybe not a part of the family by blood, but a part of the family because they are there and you treasure them. Much like Wait, exactly like not everyone knows each other. And not all Persians are related. But I thought not all sure. humans knew each other. We are all humans. Yes. Yes, we are. And we know each other. We do. This is That's, true. Though our acquaintance is quite new for some of us, more than others. And my family? To me? Zane, yes. Zainab classified you as such. Oh, okay. I'm family. I'm human family. That's correct. <laughs> and Zainab actually, like, tightens a little bit at this and uh, their eyes dart for a moment trying to find a way to kind of steer the conversation in another direction kind of for Cassandra or at least knowing something that perhaps the others don't um yes but before we you know know each other um there's always a strangeness um a emptiness of knowing first a, a void that we must fill with what Conversation, questions, intimacy, and listening. Intimacy. Of a familiar kind, you know, platonically. Anyways, um, Ella, was that your first time meeting Aram? I... I don't know. Do you know that family? I you can choose don't... whether or not you know the Yazdani family or not. I think I would. Okay. If not by, if not personally, then then by you know, reputation. By reputation. Mm -hmm. well, if you had ever um, had dealings with them, you probably would have met Aram at some point. Uh, he's been with the family. Uh, like, well, his family has been connected to that family for generations. So. Okay. Um, it so he's also be... Persian. Probably. I was like trying to do math, and I was like, if I'm Greek. And he is Persian. There's a good chance that they're probably not related, but you never know. <laughs> yeah. This is all so very confusing. Humanity. Yeah, I don't understand them. Us. I don't understand us. I would agree. The human Humanity condition. is very difficult to understand. Mm -hmm. I've read about it so much in books, and yet in practice, it is very difficult. For Nothing instance, ever is the same as it is in books. No. It is quite upsetting. 
for instance, you all said it was awkward earlier. How does one know that it's awkward? Is it when the quiet is is too loud or is it when there is a silence that's unnecessary? And how will I know when it is a comfortable silence and when it is an awkward silence? Well, generally something is awkward when there is information not being shared that one person feels should be and the rest feel should not or the other way around. Oh, what information was shared? It look around. Know. But a good example that you might have found awkward was you running away from me. I felt that that was very... Ella, may I speak to you for five minutes away from everyone else except for Zainab who must come with me? Actually, Zainab, uh, would you stay like do that thing where you're far away, but you can still watch me, but you can't read my lips, that kind of thing? A respectful distance, yes. Great, cool. Ella, will you uh, come with me for a moment? Uh, yes. I uh, grab her arm really tight and try to move her with her, her far away. <laughs> I go, but like very clearly not being led by the arm, just kind of looking at the arm and just, eh, sweet, okay. <laughs> she couldn't pull you anyway, so you know, just like a paperweight. No. Uh, so she probably like pulls and goes like, oh, once they're alone, okay, so none of those people know about my medical history. Let's keep it that way. Between you and me, me and you and my parents who seem to want to keep it between everyone on the planet. Please. I wasn't about to tell anyone about your medical history. I don't know how doctors really work because most of them just tell my business to my parents and then they get into a whole tizzy about things. No, I have no interest in that. Okay. Thank you. While this conversation is transpiring, what do the rest of you do? As there's this quick exit. <clears throat> I mean, we know Zainab is at least keeping one, if not two eyes on Theodosia. Zainab moves with a very particular kind of grace, kind of um, her feet move one after the other, almost as if they're floating, kind of in an arc so that as Theodosia moves, their line of sight is maintained with them. Uh, but keeping a respectable distance. And then their eyes kind of fall to the other two. Kate is going again and kind of meandering the aisles of books, not really picking anything up, but just kind of getting a gauge on if there's any kind of particular theme to them like why exactly is this library being collected is it just just the library of alexandria but in in turkey or you know does it have a specific purpose um well on this if you stay on the first floor it will feel like that that it is the, like the library of alexandria just in turkey it is a collection of all kinds of things um you'll find them aesthetically pleasing together on this floor and even in some situations like thematically as you look and see like four or five or six of them together you go huh that feels right but i don't know why um but mm, as for a purpose on the first floor kate's view would probably be that it is a display. It is a display of variety. It is a display of wealth. It is a display of, in some ways, power. Just taking note of that. Also, keeping What's... a distant eye on Fidosi and Ella. I'm okay. a messy bitch who lives for drama, so. <laughs> I love it. Cassandra, that leaves you and Zainab and Nahir. 
what are we supposed to be doing right now? That is an excellent question. What would you like to be doing right now? Enjoying the party, say from a distance. Or what remains of it? What was this party for? For people to come and see the library and for me to learn who here values it the same way I do. And how do you value it? It is a key. It but where's the key. where's the door? The door is the future. Okay. It's a very what? nice key. Thank you. What kind of future lies behind the the door we're trying to open? I think trying is a bit hesitant. It's a door that will open regardless of how well the key fits. It's what we find on the other side of the door that this key can shape. A future that restores this city and this empire's name. Is it built from this ink and paper in these books? Mm, no, it is built deeper than that. When you open that book and you read those words and those ideas waft across your eyes, through your lips and into your heart, that, that is what the key is made of. Is that normal? What us normal humans do with books? That is what good books do. They reach you in a way that other things cannot. They I love books. Yes, I can see that. Are you still clutching the uh, book you had first picked yes. up? Yes. And you have an excellent one there. Have you had a chance to open it? Not yet. I'm mm. trying to um, enjoy the party. Yes. Like a perfect lady. <laughs> you are doing an excellent job. And you have quite the models. Oh, me. they're they're lovely models, aren't they? Mm -hmm. All with their own unique perspectives. I'm going to give them all flowers. That sounds like a lovely idea. Yes. But, Cassandra, you need to learn which flower speaks to each one. Because even the, even the flowers will speak to you if you know them well enough. I know. I thought I... you might. I was trying to see if I could find phrases that were much more comfortable for you than potato potato might be. Well, potato is a, it's a plant, and some of it grows underground, and some of mm -hmm. it's over the ground. <laughs> yes, and as a phrase, it's interesting. But when you know the plant, I'm sure it will all reveal itself to you, just as other living things do. Don't eat the leaves. No, no. That's my advice. Do not eat potato leaves. Now I will read a poem from this lovely book, like a perfect lady. Wonderful. As you look again at the cover, you will note the title of it. It's called The Zenith of Nature. And the author is Suleiman Manesh. When you flip open the pages, you will note that each page is illustrated um, in the margins, around the words, behind the words. It is as beautiful as artwork um, as the cover. Is, is there a way that I could borrow this book? What do you mean borrow? To read it and to put it beside where I sleep and to read it tomorrow 
and the next day and then bring it back here. I think a better plan, one that Zeynep would feel much more excited about, is if I were to say it must stay here, so you must leave the house more often and venture out into the world and see the beauty around the house and outside the house on your way to read the beauty within those pages. Does that sound like a lovely adventure to be had? The house is quite nice. I shouldn't, um, as long as I return to the house. Yes, of course. I don't want you, to stay away from it too long. I understand. You can accompany Zainab and Theo when they uh, arrive, or if you need, you just have Zainab or someone of the house send word, and you can come on your own as well. I, I like to travel with perfect ladies. Mm -hmm. That is why I thought the offer to accompany them might be your preferred method. Yes. Yes, I will travel with my perfect ladies. That sounds like a lovely plan. And Kate, what of you and your perfect ladyness? Have you found those? connections you seek? Well, I'm not much of a reader, but it, uh, it all does seem very interesting. You've got quite the collection. Hmm. Thank you. It is generational. Mm. Have your family right. been here long? Yes. We have been in the city um since the early days of the Persian Empire. Mm. So were you inheriting the library, or was this just um, an annual thing? I am the eldest and the rightful matriarch of this house. When the time comes, all of this is mine, yes. Mm. But why display it to the public now? Well, not really to the public, of course, but... Well, the invitation was open to whomever wished to attend. Whether or not people of different social stations chose to not take the invitation, that was their decision, mm. not mine. But still, why now? Because the Empire needs this now. They need to re-envision tradition. Um, to not rebuke it or ignore it, but to reimagine it in a modernizing world. Mm. You cannot thrive clinging to the past. You will only find regret and heartache. A woman of my own heart. I never linger on the past. Then you understand what I am saying. To have a bright future, you must be present in the present and work towards something of value. For me, that is restoring the Empire's reputation. We once were known for being the epicenter of scholarly works in the, um, uh, for thousands and thousands of miles. Well, I could certainly see why. But much of that became seen as power and it became closed off and closely guarded. And as struggles hit, they guarded it more and guarded it more and guarded it more until they had closed it off to 
nearly everyone, but a select few. You cannot grow if you cut yourself off. Some would say. I'm sure it's a wise statement to many. It depends on what your goals are. But if you do not open yourself to opportunities, you cannot have change. And without change, there cannot be growth. Some plants cannot grow without being pruned. Ah, pruning is different than cutting oneself off. Imagine a plant without the sun. Or one without nutrients in its soil. Removing itself from the beetles and the worms of the earth that irrigate and replenish all of the fertile nutrients which make the plant thrive. That is the kind of cutting off that destroys growth. Touche in here. Touche. Pruning is just a healthy part of growing for many. You must cut off that which is draining your energy rather than bringing you health and vigor. So what invigorates you, Ms. Clark? Adventure. The new. She's so hot. She's so <laughs> oh! She's like the Japanese she... anime just nosebleeds. Just, it's just nosebleeds yes. all the time. <laughs> Why is she so hot for? She just could just exist. <laughs> There's no need to be this hot in here. You could just live. <laughs> Jesus. The new and the now, though. Hmm. Yes. The unexpected. And we get there through innovation. I'm sorry, what? I'm the, sorry, I, I cut you off. The, th that which has not been experienced. Yes. That's exactly where I was going. The innovation of it all. The finding of new pathways. The taking of the old and, and reimagining it in new contexts and creating something that has never been thought of before. Never been experienced before. Well, you might like to talk to Ella Malice about that one, but... Mm hmm Ella is someone who would be quite welcome on this pathway. But you, Miss Clark, you have the curious eye. You have a tendency, I've noticed, to be able to size people up in a glance. It's very impressive. One of my few talents. You've learned to read people after um, meeting so many different types. Mm -hmm. The more you travel, the more you understand the human condition. So, because she has broad shoulders and the ability to handle it, what did you think of Zeynep here when you first saw her? Tall, statuesque. Stiff. In what way? Hmm, in many. <laughs> Some better than others. Zainab, do you find yourself a creature of routine? <laughs> Bella's having a heart attack right now. So, my ace heart can't take all the sexual tension. I don't know what to do with it. I am less a creature of routine and more one of seasons. Mm. Like the plants and flowers and worms you're so accustomed to speaking of. Gardening is a hobby of mine. I have a very nice garden outside. It's true. Yes. Outside does have contain many nice gardens. Yes, but I planted one. 
Oh, where? Outside. Just this building? No, the other building. Ah, yes. I would love to see it sometime. So, would you say that you anticipate well? The, hmm, my favorite flower, it is the snowdrop. It Mm. is white and it has three petals. And it is both a symbol of death because it is the first petal or is the first flower to close its petals when the snow begins to fall. But it is also the first to open when the winter begins to thaw. Death and hope. All things are good at anticipating some things. Mm -hmm. I am like the snowdrop. Yes, yes, you are. Hypervigilant, aware of one's surroundings. Maybe a little stiff from time to time, but I'm sure just like its petals, you're quite soft as well, when the context is right. Soft petals, sharp tips. Indeed. Guilty. So, Kate, how does that inform your observation? I think even the iron can bend. Indeed. With the right touch. I'm assuming oh, I'm assuming by this time, Theo. Yeah, um, I was just saying, uh, by this time, Ella, you, I, I have I definitely at least walked up on this and gone, I did what actually the heck did just happen? Oh, you have a question? Mm. You shouldn't it? touch yeah. <gasps> um, things. <laughs> Not without permission. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> permission. And be careful. Yes, we should all be careful which things we are touching and do so liberally, but yes. only with permission. Especially when Bless. swords are involved. No, I was yeah, just definitely to swords. Okay. Otherwise, you'll end up with the sharp tip of the petal rather than the softness. And what is that question, Ella? Please get me out of here. <laughs> um, yeah, Ella? I Ella, can't stop myself. Ella, Theodosia are having a conversation that's not as sexy, mostly just normal. Just a doctor oh. and her patient talking. <laughs> Don't know yet. We haven't had. Yeah. Um, Ella, Ella. <laughs> um, Theodosia, when was the last time you saw a physician? See, when you say, hmm, when you say saw a physician, do you mean? When was the last time a physician saw you? Because I was going to, I'm I'm going to be honest with you because you are very, you seem to strike me as a very honest type. I was going to say right you now, say, I was, I was going to go. You like, say oh, saw. Oh, I was going to say, uh, trying to figure out a way around that and say that just now, because I met you, so I saw a physician. Do you see where I was going to go with this? It was a clever... Yes, I do. Okay. Mm -hmm. Um, When you saw me, that was when. Uh, Since then, my parents have uh, checked in infrequently. They have have decided that I have improved enough that I can go out. Since I have, they were not given any bad news. And have you? In truth, I step closer. I fear I might have done worse. But I don't want to stay indoors anymore. There's a big wide world and I would like to see it, even a little. 
I'm sure you can understand. Yes, I can. You probably know already, but I'm probably going to die quite young. I was never made for the long haul anyways. So why don't I just enjoy the life I was given, the short one? My parents think that they can prolong this whole thing, but technology can only go so fast. Medicine can only go so fast. And I am a lost cause in that case. But adventure is never a lost cause. Romance is never a lost cause. Oh, but you must not tell one more person. You can't tell any of those or my parents. And you must, must not tell Tanju. Okay? Does Tanju not know? Sick. No. You know, okay, well, I was gonna do he was he is a warrior. He would have gotten the best physicians ever and would say, Well, what am I gonna do? My fiance is ill, you know, put up a big bus. He would have been worse than my parents. It is a kind act, I think. I've thought it over a lot to protect the ones you love from hurt. In a way, don't you think I'm, I am being, don't you think I am sparing them by lying? You are sparing them now. That is all we have, the now. <laughs> Interesting. Hmm. Do you, what do you, how, how are you surviving with? Well, questionable methods. I don't really want to get into it. Just, um, don't, don't worry too much. I would be interested to know more. And in time, maybe I will tell you. For now, let's enjoy the party. Is there any I, I run, try to run off. <laughs> <sighs> this conversation is making me very stressed. <laughs> She'll let you go. Zainab, Zainab. Um, Chris. Yes. Can I tell how unwell Theodosia is? You could do a cursory look. It wouldn't be definitive. Mm -hmm. And um, you would know to anticipate updating your position as more information is shared. But yes. Okay. I'd like to add it probably since last time Ella has seen Theodosia, she's definitely gone thinner and paler, which is amazing because she was very pale and thin to begin with. Okay. So there is a ghost somewhere in this building. There's a full on ghost. She's like a little bit, barely any melanin, just like barely moving through life. I'm going to take out a little notebook, make a note, and head back to the rest. Excellent. As How the two was the conversation you, what I missed? As the two of you arrive, you catch the, um, well, where I ran from the conversation. Mm -hmm. um, You're really taking after Theodosia there, Chris. What's going on? I was doing my best impersonation. I love that for you. <laughs> uh, Theodosia definitely instantly runs to Zinib and like takes her hand and goes, That's Zinib, did I miss anything? I'm reading, reading poems. Poems? And what was you? What were you doing, Zinib? Um, pleasant conversation. 
with Nahira and uh, Miss Clark here and Cassandra. I'm sure that it was a lovely conversation indeed. What riveting conversation you must be having. You must fill me in later. Every word. They were talking about gardens and swords. Oh. Flexibility. Oh, oh, oh. oh. I'm sorry. And planting cycles and <laughs> petals. <laughs> And vermission and sharp bits. Mm. How right. long were we gone? It felt like only a few moments. I don't understand. <laughs> These are a lot of topics to cover in such a short span. Theo, dear, you should know as well as anyone. A few words can communicate many things. Mm. The more you pack in, sometimes some messages are lost. Which is true. Some people can say in five words what others must say in 30. Mm-hmm. Well, that's true. It's possible each of us only uttered a mere sentence at that and communicated all those things. Wow. Well, it sounds as if I, I missed a lot. I hope that uh, you guys will be able to fill me all in later. Suppose. The big thing that I wanted to communicate while you were away um, was my hope that this library and others like it could be a key to a brighter future for Constantinople and the Empire uh, as a whole. That um, we could flourish once again by sharing our wealth of knowledge in ways that would attract new life new avenues of vigor and vibrance. A brighter Constantinople sounds pleasant to me. Do you have a lot of adversaries in this mission? Mm. Many here and other places. Other places more fearing for our history does have an element of conquest to it that makes them rightfully um, worried. But internally, there are many who cling to the past, trying to regain something that cannot live in the future, for it is not meant to live in the future. That wasn't literal, right? What is not meant to live in the future? Old traditions that only can be served in different contexts. We must re-envision those old traditions in more modern ways. We don't have to eschew them, but we definitely need to revise them. And this library is the first step. Opening it and showing it to people as a place where there can be an exchange of inspiration is a very small step in that direction. Hmm. And as you, were share, as you were sharing this, did everyone agree to such a fair mission? Nicole? I look at Zena for a really long time. I didn't know I needed a goal. Oh, but you were born with one, dear. Yes, but I don't like that one. <laughs> no, I meant the one that you set for yourself, not the one that others set for you. Oh! As soon as I think of it, I'll tell you. I, I look forward to it. I would like to know as well. I would also like to know. Me too. <laughs> Nahir, what is your ultimate vision for Constantinople? Um... I would like to create a place 
where not just the libraries are open, but more of a place of education to set a standard for how to share information across cultures and across um, borders so that all can, I don't know, innovate. So we can find a faster, better way to a healthier future. The more we isolate our information, the more we hoard our, what we know, the more we must duplicate work that others have already completed. Hmm. It is not efficient. No, it is not. And Some might think, even call it stifling. Oh, yes. it is. And think, think of all someone like you, dear doctor, could do with scholars from all over the, the known world, visiting, sharing, collaborating, and building upon the works of predecessors and contemporaries alike. I could get a lot more done now, than now. Mm -hmm. But I'm sure you know in your field and others that it becomes insular. Some fear of losing out. Some knowledge is not for everyone. This is true. That is why there should be excellent curators and educators to guide those uh, along their path, to help them find the pieces of themselves they did not know were missing. We should not take pieces from people. Correct, you should not take pieces from not. people. But some people, and actually most people, are born incomplete. Perfectly incomplete, but incomplete nonetheless. And only experience can make them whole. Here, here. I look at Ella a long time. And so what do you need of us? I need... Uh, I, I need like-minded individuals to come together and to make a difference in this city and from here elsewhere. We've tried this before and uh, through the political angles and it fell flat because those who spoke for the masses never asked them and we failed. We failed to reach out to them first and to bring their message to everyone else. So that way they could not be spoken for. You should not blame yourselves for a failure of others. That was very insightful, Cassandra. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Oh, you're welcome. If you uh, all are interested in knowing more, we could have dinner. Yes. As a group? Would like that. As a whole, all of us? I look, look around at the, the, all of us. Okay. Unless any of you are not interested in learning more, I would not force it upon anyone to attend. But Kate may find avenues to find the connection she's looking for. Cassandra may find whatever it is that Cassandra will learn she's seeking. You, dear Theodosia, you seek experiences. These should be safe enough, not only with Zeynep, but also if planned appropriately and held accordingly. And of course, Doctor, I see how this aligns for you, at least at the onset. If later you wish to take your leave, 
any of you, that is fine. And I did not mean to gloss over Zainab as though you are some sort of um, attaché. You in your own right have your own goals. There are many things that you wish are to be different. Maybe shaping a different Constantinople will make those commonly acceptable. I know for myself, I am like that snowdrop we spoke of before. Mm -hmm. Petals hidden and stuffed beneath the snow, but waiting for a thaw to come, a chance to be out in the sun. That is what I hope for our country. We are in the dead of winter, no matter what the Sultan or his viziers try to tell. I speak only for myself. I must make this very clear. I, I do I not speak for the family. Excellent. As, as long as I make that clear, mm -hmm. and as long as we don't presume. Mm. It is not in perfect. my nature to presume. Besides, I will take responsibility for whatever she says. It is basically what I say anyways. That's how it works. I appreciate that, but there is no need of that. I stand mm. awkwardly, protectively in front of Zinep, like I could do it, literally anything. Are you her bodyguard now? Yes, now I in this so. exact moment. Emotionally, yes. Physically, absolutely not. You should give yourself more credit. <laughs> I, am a, um, I would love to take up your invitation for dinner. I had some snacks earlier and they were delicious. So I'm assuming the dinner will be as well. I never turn down a dinner party. I am so glad to hear that. And what of you, Doctor? Of course. Wonderful. So. Um, stay as long as you like. But um, know that dinner will be served promptly at six in the house proper. We'll be there. Very good. And on that invitation, dear friends, we close out our premiere episode. Ah, so horny. Did anyone think the word affair was a dead giveaway of wow. being horny? <laughs> wow. Did anyone think? I thought we'd make it at least an hour and a half before it got too horny. <laughs> We're here now, you Listen. know? You know, we tried. The moment, you know, the moment Nahir came in the picture, we were all doomed. We're here. We were all We're getting used to it. <laughs> Get used to it. <laughs> Like, I mean, I may have had some well insights spoken. into your weaknesses, but you know, whatever. Yeah, I feel like I've been used. I feel dirty and betrayed. What by type Chris. of woman do we all like? And apparently, it's all Nahir. It's just Nahir. It's just Nahir. <laughs> oh. Because she's like well spoken and she's like beautiful mm. and powerful. Oh, she makes <sighs> metaphors. Oh, I love possessed. her. Uh, <laughs> primal. Primal. <laughs> I, I just want to take a video clips of every time we make a face when someone like <laughs> when she says literally anything. We're just like ah, ah. she makes <laughs> metaphors. Oh, I love her. Whoa. Sex. Sorry. Oh. Primal. <laughs> Hearing my own voice is the most jarring <laughs> thing I've ever experienced. I'm sorry. In my life. I I'm never gonna live it down. I, I'm so sorry you all had to hear my own voice again. Uh. Oh. So thank you to the uh, everyone in chat. It was so wonderful to have you all here with us. Uh, we hope that you will return every other Monday with us. And uh, every other Sunday. PM, and every other Sunday on this channel as well for the Vampire the Masquerade All Cosplayed Show as well. I caught that yesterday. It was lovely. Um, but before we do say our adieu, 
let me pass it over to Adelaide and you can begin the outros and close us up. Yes. Uh, so again, this is Action Fiction's second, but essentially our first tabletop shows. We intend to do many, many more in the future, all indie RPGs, all fully dressed up. Uh, this is the most exciting part. Again, it was so fun to just kind of plan everything together. And, and now it's here. It's finally on display for everybody to enjoy. Uh, so let's go around the table. Uh, tell us who you are. Uh, give us any shout outs if you have other shows or anything that you're creating. Uh, and we'll start with Bella. Hi, everyone. I have been Theodosia, the now learned questionably health uh, lady. Uh, and uh, you can find me on Boondoggles uh, on Twitter. I'm here every Monday, obviously, and then all train Mondays, I'll be on Everybody Crits playing a uh, Mutants and Masterminds game. And then on Thursdays, I will be playing Chromatic Cameras, uh, Olympus 2299 or something, 2277. My prayer is going to kill me for not knowing it. Uh, and that is a, uh, what is it? Cyberpunk game and Cyberpunk Red game. So that's something to look forward to. There's other games. I can't remember them, so I'm just going to move on. I'm really good at promoing myself. <laughs> Me too. Sarah, you're up. Thank you so much. I just, big thank yous to everyone here and also in whichever direction chat is. Y'all have been absolutely amazing. I'm this or this on the internet. Um, come follow me if you want to hear... Um, talk of general tabletop RPGs and pictures of baked goods. And I have a podcast called Little Realms where I play a character who is just as big, but not quite as thirsty uh, as Zainab became immediately. <laughs> and that's all I'll say. Wonderful. Nikki? I am Nikki. Um... <laughs> you're fine why. you're gonna get used to it real fast don't worry uh, um i was going to say a lot of stuff and then i forgot what it was <laughs> well go follow nikki on twitter that's nick cool on twitter uh she's wonderful she's also in her vampire the masquerade game hilarious game oh my gosh she plays a wraith in a group oh. of vampires uh yes. it's just it's really really awesome to show to, to to show to to watch so go watch that show uh and that's on every other sunday same week as this show same time same place and chantel hey uh i am chantel b you can find me at chantel b on twitter um and in most places i think mm. um i play games Elsewhere on the internet, um, you can find me at Lost Worlds Archive on time zones. You can find me at Lost Worlds Archive on a Saturday morning, Eastern time, 7 a.m., which is really early and I understand that. But if you happen to be awake, then we're playing uh, some open legend, um, which is comedy because that's all this particular group of people can do. <laughs> we just, everything is funny. So comedy is very much where we sit. Um, on uh, tomorrow, I will be tomorrow at 8 p.m. Eastern. Uh, I will be over at any underscore actors channel playing Good Society. And it seems that there is a thirst theme in my life right now. So, you know. Good that's, Society games that's, are that's notoriously what's... thirsty. It's, <laughs> I, we're finding a way to kill my husband so Ooh. we can have more kisses. <laughs> that's Love the it. aim of the game right now. Um, <laughs> You can also find me at my website, which needs updating, but it's still there, wordswithcolor.com. And I tend to write character material and just sort of put it up there. If people want to know a little bit more about what my character's thinking at any given moment. So, yeah. Awesome. Uh, Chris, Ooh, that you... means Ella flash fiction? Ooh, yes. That means Ella flash fiction. I'm living for it. <laughs> Chris, is there anything else you'd like to plug? Um. Uh, every other Monday here I will be on um, Action Fiction. Every Friday I am a cast member in uh, Wandering DM's Cyberpunk Red Game. Mm -hmm. We are in our third season 
and I play a um, trauma team uh, surgeon who also knows a lot of people, it seems. Um, there. And then on top of that, myself, and actually Chantel is a part of that group as well. Um, there's a group of us collaborating on a tabletop RPG um, called Omens Rising. And as we get more of it fleshed out, we will start releasing uh, that information across the internet. Um, we have a wide variety of um, very talented folk that are a part of that project. Um, Chantel being one of them, as I mentioned. Um, it will be a great, great experience once uh, for you all once we, once we get, uh, get there. But um, until then, you can always preemptively follow at Romans Rising on Twitter because that's where we will launch things. And there will be other presences around the internet. Um, at Nomadic, Joey uh, is going to head up our social media presence. So um, if any of you are familiar with his work, uh, you will find it um, as part of Omens Rising as well. Awesome. Again, thank you all for being here tonight. Thank you to the cast. I've had a blast. I hope you have too. Be sure to come in again in two weeks' time. Every game is going to be bi-weekly for now. 8 o'clock p.m. EST. We've got Vampire the Masquerade on Sunday nights, and we have Castle Falconstein in this game tonight. So be sure to tune in next time. I hope to see you all again soon, and you'll have a fantastic night. Bye! I never know how to stop these things. Stop streaming. Yeah. <laughs>